Now the Vivo V23 series were some brilliant budget smartphones that really punched well above their weight when it came to the camera tech. And even though they were only launched six short months ago, we already have their successors. Uh, it's not the V24 though, Vivo has somewhat confusingly skipped straight to the V25 series, presumably because of the whole the number four is bad luck shenanigans. Now this here Vivo V25 5G offers a few upgrades over the older V23, including a bigger battery, some fresh camera features, and a funky color change in design. But in at least one big way, it's also not quite as good as that older model. Dun dun dun, hopefully that set up a good bit of suspense for later. So anyway, enough waffle, let's whip the Vivo V25 5G on out of its box, take you on a full-on tour of the hardware and the software. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do pop subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers. Alrighties. So stuffed in this rather spiffing box, you've got one Vivo V25. You've got Vivo's 44 watt flash charge adapter, Type-C USB cable, you got a tasty bit of condom case action, so you can slap that on your Vivo V25, keep it safe from all of the world's ills. And Vivo has also generously chucked in a pair of wired headphones as well, lovely stuff, and it is a actual 3.5mm headphone jack set as well. Unfortunately though, that just appears to be a massive tease, because there's not actually a 3.5mm jack anywhere on the Vivo V25. Weird. Anyway, that's the box done, so now let's check out the phone. So I've got the Vivo V25 5G all set up, ready for action. And as you can see there, it is a chunky wee chap. The V25 Pro model is actually curved, but the regular Vivo V25 sports a more angular finish, including that iPhone style flat edging. And this sort of design seems crazy popular among the sort of budget to mid-range Android smartphones in 2022. We've seen some Xiaomi phones like this. The Nothing phone, of course, was a big chunky morpho. And it is only a 6.44 inch display on the Vivo V25. So not the biggest around, but you do have fairly thick bezels surrounding that screen that adds a good bit of girth on. An almost Jimmy Hill-esque chin down below. And then if we flip it over, the arse end is constructed from Fluorite AG glass. It's pretty hardy stuff, so hopefully it shouldn't scratch up over time. And as you can see, they've got a lovely matte finish as well to help mask fingerprints and other grime. And this right here is the Aquamarine Blue model. Very bright and beautiful and bold and vibrant. Absolutely adore it. But that rear end actually changes color when UV light strikes it, just like the Realme 9 Pro Plus. And yeah, it's really sunny out today, so I could just step outside my own front door to demonstrate this feature. But I'm going to take the lazy approach and just use a UV torch. And in Vivo's own words, you've got a soothing color that evokes peace and calm, but as the light intensifies, the light greenish blue turns deeper and darker, like the gradient of the ocean as you dive deeper into its waters. Glide through the dancing shadows cast by the ripples and let your mind and body fully relax. So there you go, quite the parlor trick. It darkens immediately as soon as sunlight strikes it and then just give it a few minutes and it's back to its brilliant blue original color. And frankly, I could do this all day long. I kind of feel a bit like Neil Buchanan creating his own artistic masterpieces. Ta-da, here's another one I made earlier, quite literally a tech spurt. And if this particular hue doesn't rock your world, well, no worries. You can also pick up the Vivo V25 in sunrise gold or diamond black. Anywho, that's enough fun times with that funky design. Now let's take a look at the software and what you've got here on the Vivo V25 is the latest FunTouch OS 12 slapped on top of Android 12. Thankfully, this doesn't really mess around too much with the Android UI experience. You've still got your Google Discover feed there. Let's not talk about the Sunland match. You've got your apps tray to store away all of your goodies. You can drag down the notifications bar from anywhere on screen. This does add in quite a lot of personalization options as well. So for instance, go to dynamic effects and you can piddle about with everything from the fingerprint icon animations to the facial recognition animations, the charging animations, pretty much everything. And Fun Touch also adds in some decent gesture support like a dedicated one-handed mode, quite useful as it's a chunky old smartphone this. And plenty of other bonus bits including a dedicated gaming mode which we'll bang on about in a bit. And as for your storage, you've got a choice of 128 or 256 gigs of space for the Vivo V25. As you can see, this is the 256 gig model. 22 gigs used by the system, so not bad at all. Plenty of spare space to go. But the good news is you don't need to upgrade to that 256 gig model because you do actually have space in that double-sided SIM tray for a micro SD memory card. Now the Vivo V25 5G sports basically the same display tech as the older V23 model. We're talking a 6.44 inch AMOLED screen with Full HD plus resolution. Like most AMOLED displays on modern smartphones, it's an absolute cracker. You've got nice sharp punchy visuals on this thing, full HDR10 plus streaming support as well as you've got HDR support in the likes of Netflix. 
viewing angles are as wide as you like and even on a bright sunshiny day like today here in the good old UK's I still had absolutely no issues whatsoever seeing what was going on on that screen as long as I maxed out the brightness levels. And you do actually get an old school nipple notch up top housing that selfie camera which does intrude a little bit on the action when you go full screen for you know your Netflix, your movies, your games, whatever else. But it's not quite as fat and intrusive as the one on the V23 with its double selfie cam action. Head to the display settings and you can play around with the screen colours, you've got a few different modes you can choose from. You can also customise the likes of the fonts, the font style and as you can see here you can play around with the refresh rate as well. It's on automatic to begin with but you can bump it up to the maximum 90Hz refresh full time if you like. Sadly no stereo speaker set up here on the Vivo V25, it is just a single mono speaker housed here on this bottom flat edge but is it any good? I've only worn them for a short time but they do feel really good on your arm, nice and light and pretty comfortable. Now even when you chuck it up to the maximum volume that mono speaker is still rather quiet so not particularly good if you live in a loud household you're hoping to use that to watch some video with lots of background bullshit going on. And though at least it's not too tinny it is a shame you don't get a 3.5mm headphone jack which I was really hoping for once I spied those earphones in the box still very random indeed, but you do have Bluetooth 5.2 support and the streaming seems absolutely fine to speakers and headphones. Now one area that is slightly upsetting on the Vivo V25 5G is the performance. And that's not to say that the performance is bad by any means, but it has been downgraded since the previous model. You see the Vivo V23 sported the MediaTek Dimensity 920 chipset, whereas here on the Vivo V25 it's just the regular 900. This is the same chipset that was found in the OnePlus Nord CE2 5G and the Oppo Find X5 Lite and it's backed here on the Vivo by either 8 or 12 gigs of RAM. This is the 8 gig model, less than thrilling benchmark scores there. Every day running is absolutely fine, you'll see the occasional little stumble here and there but nothing dramatic. Apps do close down quite quickly in the background though so you will be constantly looking at loading screens while things boot up. I don't know the situation myself, I'm assuming the reason that Vivo went with the Dimensity 900 chipset is because of basically SOC shortages. It's just really annoying that they downgraded it from the previous generation rather than giving it a bit of a boost instead, but hey ho. Thankfully the Vivo V25 5G is still absolutely fine for all of your gaming shenanigans. The likes of Call of Duty Mobile and PUBG won't support the higher graphics settings but even on the sort of medium levels they play it very very smoothly indeed the screen is perfectly responsive. So even I with my cack handed abilities at not being able to shoot in the right direction and all that still managed to get a few kills on the score sheet. And even the memory crunch and Genshin Impact managed to play with a reasonably smooth frame rate on the absolute lowest detail settings. You know, you will see the occasional little judder here and there. Again, not exactly the silkiest, smoothest experience in the world, but it is playable. Now, as with all fun touch devices, you do have a dedicated gaming mode you can yank out at any point like so. It's pretty comprehensive stuff. You've got the various performance modes that you can play around with, including a battery saver mode if you want to extend your gameplay session, otherwise boost if you're playing something demanding like Genshin Impact. You can block notifications and calls, all kinds of stuff. And while the performance has taken a step down from the Vivo V23, thankfully the same is not true for the battery tech. You've got a bigger 4,500 mAh capacity cell crammed inside of this gorgeous blue chassis. Not the biggest battery capacity you'll find at this price point by any means, but that'll be more than enough to see you through a full intensive day with lots of screen on time. Something that's definitely helped along by the energy efficiency of that MediaTek chipset. And when you do need to juice it back up again, we've got 44 watt wired charging support, same as the V23, but there's no wireless charging support here. So let's finish up this Vivo V25 unboxing with a squint at the camera tech and what you've got here is a 64 megapixel primary sensor with built-in optical image stabilization. It's not the same Samsung GW1 sensor as found in the V25 Pro model but it is still pretty bloody good at capturing everyday pictures and home movies. Like the V23 before it you can basically just point and shoot and expect good looking results around 8 or 9 times out of 10 with minimal thought behind it so in that way it's similar to the Pixel smartphones. I found my photos had a natural vibe, really like the portrait results again, it just cleanly captures your subject and you can play around with a variety of different bokeh styles if you like. And even in lower light scenarios as well, again not too much noise creeping in, fairly natural looking colours so overall great stuff. And then nothing particularly thrilling as far as the rest of the camera hardware is concerned, you've got the same basic 8 megapixel ultra wide angle shooter as that pro model and also a bog standard basic 2 megapixel macro snapper. For your video needs you can shoot up to 4K resolution footage at 30 frames per second but if you want to shoot at 60fps it gets automatically bumped down to full HD resolution. 
And you do have that god awful beautify bollocks as well if you want to uh, basically make yourself look like a plastic mannequin like good old Veronica here. And just in the 24 hours or so that I've spent with the Vivo V25, it does an absolutely fine job for your home movies. I did notice some focal pop issues when I was trying to shoot some footage with the cats here, uh, but apart from that, it generally behaved itself. The image stabilization's fine, the audio capture's absolutely fine as well. And if you stick it on that 4K level, you get some respectable detail coming through. And in low light, yeah, things get a bit more murky and grainy, but not too terrible. And then last up, if you flip around to that selfie shooter, it's a 50 megapixel effort, same as the V23, so it should capture your mug in lots of detail, far too much detail probably. And you could also shoot up to 4K resolution footage using that front facing 50 meg selfie cam, uh, again topping off at 30 frames per second. Just remember again to turn off the beautify bollocks because if you don't you'll have absolutely enormous anime style eyes and it'll be bloody weird. Oh, and there's also a vlog mode, which basically just shoots little clips of you doing stuff and then just puts a whole load of annoying, obnoxious music over the top. And so there you have it, my lovelies. That in a nutshell is the fresh new Vivo V25. 5G and it is a bit of a shame that it's a step backwards in terms of the actual performance but it'll still do everything you need it to even a bit of light gaming and a bit of Genshin at an absolute stretch. The battery life is fantastic that camera tech is surprisingly good again at this sort of price point. That's what I reckon. What do you guys think? It'd be great to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. Please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest tech and have yourselves a ruddy wonderful rest of the week. Cheers everyone. Love you.